Hello, I've made some changes to defining uh, the shrapnel events uh, in one way so I could use reuse them. Um, so instead of having list one, list three, and list five, I basically turned that into one list called shrapnel events. The first list using a velocity of arc tangent, arc, hyperbolic arc tangent of one sixth. And um, instead of using t equals 1, I decided to use t equals hyperbolic cosine of 1 sixth. That way, um, uh, this will be, uh, this. I'm using the coordinate time based on um, if their, uh, if their uh, proper time is 1 and their traveling with the rapidity 1 6 then their uh, the coordinate time will be hyperbolic cosine of 1 6 I did that the same did the same thing with the velocity hyperbolic tangent of 1 third and uh, making that the time there being the hyperbolic cosine of 1 third and hyperbolic tangent of 1 half and the hyperbolic cosine being 1 half now, I thought this would be a good idea, making um, the number of points in the model 25, 50, and 75, um, basically making the, uh, the number of particles in that radius uh, proportional to the rapidity of that radius. I thought that would be a reasonable assumption. I'm not 100% sure if it comes out quite that way with an with a, an equi equipartition of rapidity, but it seems to go along with an analogy that if you have particles distributed with an equipartition in um, angle, then the number of particles that you would distribute around a circle would be proportional to that angle would be proportional to the radius, would be proportional to the radius. And here, the radius isn't, the radius isn't really based on the velocity times time, but I was thinking maybe it's the, the rapidity times time. Um, that's a, not, not a perfect analogy. Um, so I don't know if it's going to come out quite right. But anyway, this does produce a uh, explicit uh, distribution of particles. So anyway, um, from using hyperbolic arctangent of zero, let's see, zero, one, zero, one third, one half, and one, sorry, zero, one sixth, one third, and one. Now those should look like perfect circles, but um, apparently it's not quite aligned with, with the screen. You can rotate that, and I haven't been able to get it rotated perfectly, but those should be a series of concentric circles, but not concentric circles that are the same distance from each other going this way. And as you can see from the uh, diagram here, I've done this twice once uh, I did it once did a Lorentz transformation on them on the points and then came back and did it again and you can see what that looks like in the big diagram right here uh, I decided instead of doing a Lorentz transform of just one sixth um, I'd go ahead and use a Lorentz transform of two sixth um, decided to make my Hubble my rel relative Hubble observed observer velocity being hyperbolic tangent of two thirds. I'll go ahead and show you what it looked like with one third. So just so you can see, and here's what it looked like with one third. You can see there's not as much dramatic effect on there. And also the points ended up just being kind of messed up together. So I'll go ahead and show you the animation with the one-third starting from time zero 
and I'll slow that down so you can see that uh, it's kind of neat because the the little black dots um, that let me show you the little black dots here's the little black dots up here um, basically I have it draw it as a line and then I put a point up at the top of each one and the points they're not uh, those points are based on the length of this line or the sorry the the height of the line being hyperbolic cosh um, so they're all they're all ending at a little bit different points because they're all hyperbolic cosh of the rapidity and so you can see this kind of neat uh, neat effect going on how you have let's see if I can slow it down and see that phenomenon right when it comes uh, it's hard to tell when it's going to get to it I think it happens right about when this red line reaches the edge oh no it happens right when this blue line comes in meets at the very center so we'll see when that blue line reaches the very center the explosion will begin you'll see an explosion at the middle um, and then it just spreads outward as those and so this is kind of how I picture if there was some kind of a half-life of the uh, of some kind of huge particle involved or does that make sense uh, so so if you're in the reference frame of the particle itself then you're probably sitting right here and you would see your your uh, region explode and then everything going outward start to explode at later times until it hits the edges of the universe now to simulate that in this I would probably want to put another particle explosion um, on on one or more of those black points uh, one of the one or more of those large black points so we could see another distribution coming out from there um, but we'd also have to do a Lorentz transformation on that matrix unless we put it right at the center which wouldn't be an interesting question but if we put it somewhere other than the center um, we would need to first uh, take the shrapnel events I guess we could apply the Lorentz transformation to the shrapnel events first so that which is convenient because the LT matrix is centered on the origin of this of this description and then uh, move the origin by add, adding uh, y adding x and t vari values adding x no, adding X and T values to put it at that point right there you could also I guess add Y values to it if you wanted to have off-center explosions but for now I just kind of wanted to make sure that I had this part set up right and uh, change the rel hub observed velocity to two two thirds so we have that and then do I have a blue line in this description um, it looks like my blue yeah for some reason my blue line is way down there and and I have this thick blue line central observation so where did I put my central observation okay I actually did want that blue line to be at the center of the screen uh, my confusion right now is related to the fact that Oh, yeah, the reason that I'm confused right now is because earlier I had one of the, I had the line at one sixth and then the next, I had the, uh, the explosion here overlapping that. Of course, if I have two thirds, I'm going to need a fourth, I'm going to need a rapidity of four thirds to actually have that occupied so let's let's go ahead and do that okay 
I'm just going to add another set of shrapnel boundary events right here so that we have a set of, uh, whoops, okay, not shift enter, okay, there we go, set that up, we'll have uh, one, one half, then we'll have uh, four sixth, right, one sixth, two sixth, three sixth, four sixth, this one will also be four sixth, and Oops, four six. Of course, that could also be written as two thirds. Um, I'm going to make this actually drop off instead of going up. I'm going to have it go down because I don't want that. I want this. Don't want this explosion to be too big. I want it to kind of be a finite explosion. So it is eventually we're going to have um, the shrapnel be start going down as it goes outward away from the central explosion, so that it. So it has a distinct center. Okay, now there's our diagram, and here here it is, and you can see you can see what those look like. Um, and let's go ahead and slow that down a little bit. And you can see the two explosions coming out. And you can see that the edge of one of the explosions is at the origin. Um, and the edge of this explosion is at the center of that explosion. And then we're about to one. Get to add sound effects in the YouTube version. Don't get to do that with the GIF animations. All right, so that's essentially what that's going to look like. OK, I'm seeing a lot of people complaining about this. Um, for some reason, when I create a GIF, it refuses to loop. It will play the sequence once and stop. And uh, this person is saying, uh, my GIF logo won't loop forever. Um, why? Is this a problem? Because if I am specifically opening the browser just to open a GIF, such as this one, let's see, where'd that go? Here it is. I will hit enter so it refreshes. It's playing once, twice, and then it stops. Why would it stop? I mean, that's that's seriously all I'm opening. I'm opening in that window is that GIF. If I am opening a GIF to look at that GIF, I want that I want it to continue playing. I don't want it to just stop after two plays through. And so this guy is saying, my I know my GIF loops forever locally, but when I uploaded it to Squarespace, it works, but it won't loop. Then somebody says, well, something was up because I saved a new GIF from Photoshop and re-uploaded it, and it's looping now. And then somebody else says, unfortunately, that's not a real solution. I'm creating a multi page with multiple GIFs and making them myself in Photoshop. And anyway, the solution for me was to make sure that every time I exported for web from Photoshop, the loop forever option is selected in the looping options. Not once. Anyway. Um, that is not, I don't think that's the problem here because I'm using Mathematica and there's nothing in there. There's nothing in this export command that tells it to stop after two loops, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't even know if that they're uh, actually meaning to uh, let their users know that GIF images will animate on here because the examples they give where it does export as a GIF, they just have it showing one thing. Anyway, um, that's just going to have to do for now. Uh, thank you for watching.